So I've got the this is just yeah. Okay, everybody, when I do a sorry, sorry, Jenny, having too much time here. No, that's not okay. 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 Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the, the October planning committee meeting. Um, no friends of public call. <coughs> Not online, I don't know. Um, in that case, can we want to call the facts? At Council of Harvey and Council of Marvin. Council of Harvey and Marvin. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 All this. Thank you. Declarations of interest, any personal or prejudicial interest on this agenda? Just the normal ones, Chairman. Thank you. I look very angry with planning applications. Yeah. Just in case we ever have a meeting. <laughs> just, just in case Clarendon House is this. Okay. Just in case Clarendon House is this. Okay, thank you very much. Right. In that case, just move on to item three, I think they were the plan. And say the bills of plan. There is a report from the town plan officer who happy to say it's all the way to recovery. Yeah. She did a good job here um, in disseminating the Scotch and Buckinghamshire Council. We asked about housing requirement figures for our neighborhood development plan so we know what sort of houses we're going to get. Very interesting, two edged reply. I hope people read it. But um, the first part she said if we're going to be covering the period 2013 to 2033. We have no need for any more housing uh, because we've already met our needs. But it's the emerging local plan for Buckinghamshire, which is known as LP4B, goes up to 2024, then there may be a need for further land supply. But Buckinghamshire Council this time can't tell us what that might be. It's there. So up to 2033, 2033, no need for any more houses. 2040, there may be a need coming up in the future, but hopefully we'll, she, we will have been told by the time we're preparing the plan. Yeah. Well, that's a very encouraging response, but given they haven't actually given that response to any Buckinghamshire Council and any sort of plan for 2020, I would teach it with a remarkable lot of caution. Um, <laughs> because um, the, the, their brief in Buckingham Town Council in advance of briefing <laughs> Buckinghamshire Council members about the long term strategic planning. Um, so I think we'll hold that one gently um, and nurse it like a child. Mm -hmm. I don't think it will stand. That's my general feeling is they are, apart from talking about possible sites and possible what, they haven't had a consultation with us about anything significant. You will be aware that they have a subgroup consisting of everyone from their own party and, and have to come out of there. But if we want to talk about planning, anyone can talk about planning in a serious way is through the Growth and Infrastructure Select Committee, because it's the only opportunity for any public questions. But the members of the public and us, I think we'll need to go there at some point. So I think if we could just note that committee down in here, and if an agenda item comes up, if I don't see it, perhaps you could study that, Chairman, because I think at some point you may need to make an appearance. Thank you, Robin. Yeah, of course, she will be on top of that as well. So. Mm -hmm. um, Fran. No, I don't worry about okay. yeah. oh, On the second page of the report, under item two, that is neighboring parish councils. There's a typo there. It should read uh, these letters will be sent by the town clerk to the relevant parish clerks, not town clerks. Did us note that? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Anyone got any questions or comments <coughs> on this? No? If we could thank Sheena for the work she's done. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, yeah. It's been yeah. recovery. Yeah. Thank you for the whole committee. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, North Bucks Parish is planning to sort of film. Anthony, your meeting is suspended. Anything else, people? Nothing, nothing really. I mean, all the usual uh, issues that we've rehearsed uh, in meetings in the past. Will come up again, and what I'd like to do is to undertake to pass out the minutes what, as soon as I get them afterwards with any comments and, and circulate them outside of meetings so everybody gets the information as soon as possible. But but it is going to be face to face in Winslow, so oh, that's right. quite exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I've been going for nearly two years and I've never met any of them in the flesh. Well, except for. Pat calls Pat Harkins yeah, on yeah. mm -hmm. but, uh, 
It's mm -hmm. a pleasure meeting Roy van der Poel. Well, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I come over all the trends. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm pleased that they are having a uh, public meeting, and I hope that they do support it with some proper officers' support to the big questions that we've got to address. Because, um, see. Oh, um, yes. and as it's in Winslow, um, hopefully they will travel that far. <laughs> um, you know, um, perhaps they'll have one in Buckingham one day. Oh, that's an extra six miles. Easy. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, action reports, item five, to receive action reports, which happens to put on the list. Um, just some of the corrections there on the first page, A4225, past the roundabout, is actually agenda item 5.1, not 6.1. We must have deleted something from the agenda at some point. Yeah, and the other one correction is the last comment on page three, removal of neighborhood comments from website, and that should be agenda 8.11, not 9.11. Um, anyone have any questions on the action list? Claire, do you have any to add to any of the uh, no, the left of the list um, be done. Um, I can't find the level of money and an actual contact for AXA or the interview, so I've gone on to put the houses, so it might take a while. And we do appreciate yeah. it's been a difficult time after the death of Her Majesty catching up with everything. Yeah. I couldn't reason there today, yeah. I couldn't find anything. Apart from contact us for the tutorial, thank you. So, everyone, have a question for you. Oh, sorry, Councillor David, it's fair. Um, so, um, I've contacted us for um, the um, I can't think what his position has been, but the head locally of the NFU. Oh, right. if you want to um, give me, give me a bell or, or mystery. Yeah, this is, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I have posted them to the head office as well. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you. Robin. Good to go. On point, though we've got the roundabout on the agenda and the letter, it might be worth, and um, I think it took me some time to find one what would open. Uh, we do now have another copy of the Buckingham Transport Strategy, um, which I do think we need to either take that to the um, development group or we need to discuss it here because I think we need to familiarise ourselves with the um, content of that and as it stands, as it now appears to be a live document again because they're referring to it in development. So after it being not referred to in the VAL plan and other matters like um, the Western bypass is now being referred to. I think it's something we need to look at and, and get an understanding of it, to see how we can um, use it to our advantage. Um, um, because I think if, the, if it is a large document, we can get the policies out of it that suit us. Thank you, Robin. You just need really to find one, which is the draft plan for the proposed um, left hand filter lane on the A422. Trafford Road coming in from um, Melton Queens. Um, we've all had it's mm -hmm. done related. Thank you, Catherine, for managing to get hold of this. Have you, Robin? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Robin, yeah. you know, yeah. 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 get hold of this. I'm saying do the screen grab off the screen <laughs> in the meeting. Mm -hmm. yes. the, yes. Yes. Is, yes. the consensus is the consensus is totally unnecessary because there's never been any traffic problems, the left turning traffic at that roundabout. Um, I've looped. Five to ten years, and I've never ever seen more than three cars waiting to go go around. If if any, um, it's going to be a massively expensive operation because there's a steep bank down the side of it. And um, I I feel as planning to be that we we should actually point this out to Bucks Park Buckinghamshire Highways. This is it's unnecessary. It's unneeded, and it would be a huge waste of money. Absolutely. Martin. Yeah, not only is it not really needed, and, and it's engineering um, sort of uh, needs extra engineering to do it. Mm. Um, there's also the uh, footpath, you know, and people getting across um, from the central reservation to that point, but there's another lane, silver mm -hmm. lane, to, yeah. to run past all the cars. That's another yeah. issue. And it's the only way to get there. Right. Um, Absolutely right. So good point. Yeah, we can include that. Um, 
Is there a, a paper called a reason why they want to do it? It's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a it in section 106 after section 106. It's it one of those yeah. things that they haven't ticked off their to-do list yet, so it keeps getting put back in. We just like Martin says, so a public good path behind the barrier. It's a problem, yeah. I think. It's right away now, though. So yeah. It might be also about asking where you're going to divert that to, because mm. they can't just close it and it's going to it first and put a diversion order on. Yeah, this, the, the section 106 proposed mitigation is to do with those here away, not which is <laughs> couldn't get much better. Mm. <laughs> yeah. This policy um had its roots back in the Buckingham Transport Development Plan, which was originally its intentions were to make take contributions out of the Developments to uh, other developments to mitigate for the traffic. Now, this dates back to the early 2013 14, as it was in the original plan when it went out. Also, in that plan, it said it'd take mitigations to the Western Bypass, which would have been probably better that amount of money sent on the Western Bypass. Yeah. My only concern to it is, is in the sense that they'll probably build it. Um, but having, when they constructed, if you remember, the Tesco's roundabout, and they had to do the increased lane mm -hmm. on the Tesco roundabout. Right next door to the town council's railway walk, they had to build a revetment, mm -hmm. which was a large expense to build this revetment because you can't sort of, a road has to be stabilized. Mm -hmm. So it will have to have a massive revetment for the bank and the slope going away from it. And, um, and that will cost quite a lot. Um, Period, but it is going to come out of the development money, mm -hmm. so in, um, for where it is. But I think it would be probably, as probably said, is we are some methodology that leads them to the conclusion yeah. that this is going to support the Maze Morton development because it isn't going to make any difference unless they're suggesting they're all going to come out down the lane past the church. So I think we need to understand why. Um, but it has, it's something that they can pin on them because it's been in policy after policy after policy. And we don't, because you're not talk. they don't haven't spoke to the town council in any great length about their intentions to do with the A421. And we need to get an understanding to put the picture together of what they're thinking is to do with transport. Seeing one thing in isolation isn't really helping. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I am seriously concerned that if you look at the bank in there, that will cost an absolute oh, minute to probably. put that up because yeah. I worked with Graham Smith on getting the, they originally wanted to just put the road in, but we, he forced them, he was an officer at the time, to actually put in a concrete wall revetment by the footpath because it just would tumble into the brook. So um, we are a similar thing there, but I think they never didn't notice, but I, I think to understand their methodology on it, yeah. and I don't think they know anyway mm. it's probably worth reminding members as well that mill lane has actually got its own calming uh, measures mm. are going to be put in place on, under the traffic plan and the yeah, section 106 for the walnut tree mm. development so it's all everything's completely mm. wouldn't it be worth asking if they've got any survey material that proved that there's a necessity definitely is that well tested do you think Roy? Um, but they were tested as a consultant for the council, so you, you're probably better right to Chrissy Pines and, and then she'll allocate. Harry? Harry, yeah. Harry, yeah. Uh, as me, I pronounce her name wrong with the world, she doesn't mind. Um, um, <laughs> but um, she should have been there, but I'd be right to her and, and she would delegate it because he, he, he works, I believe, though he works at Buckinghamshire Council, he works as a consultant on the mm -hmm. transport, which is, and he, he wrote the just picking up on what uh, Robin said, you know, it'll probably be built anyway. I mean, that's my fear because surely if it's in 106, mm. they've got to spend the money because if they don't spend it, they're not going to get it back in another way. So, yeah. oh, let's not let the developer not, you know, mm. give us that money and therefore <laughs> let's go ahead and build it even if we want it or not. I think section 106 actually says a contribution to Buckingham transport strategy for the purpose of 
So it's probably not that oh, difficult. Oh, okay. So just to stop yeah, the strategy. Right. Thank you. Uh, no, it's probably a good one. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> I think we need to understand the methodology, and as I said, because otherwise, and, and we're not going to change anything. Mm. It's been agreed in a planning meeting, which very little was said. Um, no consequence, but um, all good. Um, so I think we need to be, because otherwise, because as I said earlier, you're only hearing part of the story. You can't build a picture of what their long-term plans are. Thank you. Well, Lynn, it's a very happy chapter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Asking those questions. Thank you very much. Could you go on to item six then? Planning applications. Um, not too many tonight. First one is two White House cottages, Fletcher Road. This is some two cottages at the entrance to White House Farm. It's not the A421. It's a great two listed building. Um, it's an application for proposed front porch and detached gallery and car port formation of fence and crossover. Heritage are happy with the plans um, as far as the listing is concerned. Um, and apart from the making a hole in the hedge to join the service road, that doesn't come directly onto the A421, as it probably known as it comes onto a service road. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. they re re it when we had the bypass roundabout. Yeah, when it used to come past they took some bends out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just out of interest, the farm is actually on the market this week at three point five million pounds. Oh, but the, these, the two cottages uh, are standalone properties, private properties, not part of the farm. Oh, but is everyone happy with that? Yeah, mm -hmm. would not in. Would we allow them to? I don't mind them coming through the hedge because there's another hedge, isn't there, in front of that that, that separates the main road from the, the old um, from the service road. It doesn't run that far. Um, you will be able to momentarily glimpse through the hedge, the house. So if you want to say, I've got, it's going I've to got, yeah. the setting of a listing. I've got no concerns on the aesthetics. I was more worried about um, the procedural side and the uh, legality of coming through a hedge at a different place. Just like, you know, you've got to have a drop curve if you want to do things. That's the hedge you're talking about. It's on the inside of the suburb. Just to the right of the bins. Yes, but that's, uh, is that their age or is it? Well, Good point. Highway. Well, I, I, yeah, well, I, I don't have a problem with them coming he, through. It's his close board fence outside. If it's his hedge, you can build his close board fence behind it. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you even sure about that? <laughs> okay. Happy that, that, that. Yeah, it was just that. Really. So, yeah. in accordance with our regime, I will propose that. Um, we have no objection. Mm -hmm. Seconded yeah. by Anthony. Thank you very much. All those in favour? Thank you. That's um, everyone who's there in here today. Thank you. Um, next one. Yes. We're moving up to Avenue Road. Off Norton Road. This is Chicana. It's the second mm -hmm. house coming into the avenue. The first one on the corner is a bungalow. We've then got this bungalow and then four um, two-story. Two story houses. As you can see, it's some um, not in terribly good condition. This house, um, the householder has already got planning permission for an extension last December um, as, as ground floor extensions. Now, want to raise the roof for the first floor extension, create living accommodation, two story front side and rear extensions. It will increase it from three to four bedrooms, but there is plenty of parking, as you can see from Catherine's photographs. Um, there, the only comment from Buckinghamshire Council is from the ecologist. He wants a back box on the south um, facing side and a bird, small bird box on the north facing side of the building. Yeah. I think Buckingham Society might have struck the loss of the bungalow. Carolyn, I think, suggested that. Um, she did, but I think as a, as a whole, we support this on the proviso that it doesn't. 
detrimental impact on the communities of the adjoining neighbours. I think aesthetically the bungalow is not the best. Mm. <laughs> and um, the, the design of it that was, would be a, an improvement. Yeah. So we, we had no objection to it. Although Caroline, you know, Caroline um, does not like her bungalows. <laughs> Thank you. Martin? Yes, uh, again, aesthetically, it's, you know, it is what it is. Um, I will oppose it because it is a lot of that type of housing stock. And I don't think we should go down that avenue. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Um, is that the um, uh, Yes, okay. I propose the Buckingham Council oppose this because it is losing a bungalow out of the housing stock. Thank you. Is there a second for that? Seconded by Fred Lewis. Yes. Thank you very much. Anyone else have any comments? No, I think that's right. In that case, we'll put it to a vote. All those in favour of the motion that we oppose it? Yes. Uh, you count me. No. Yeah, sorry. Four on those The motion, one. Extensions. Two. So we oppose it on those grounds. Thank you. Um, the next one is number nine, Brackley Road. So Victorian houses on Jordan, uh, sorry, Edwardian houses, almost opposite the cemetery. This particular one is right opposite the entrance of the farm next to the cemetery, farm track. Um, it's an extension back behind the building. Um, it's no lower than the existing building so the flood risk is minimalized, the flood off could the flood speed and look to and what the one thing that might run is that there it is a flat roof the extension um, and it's covered in a rubberized PVC material. Can't be seen from almost anywhere apart from the bowls club which is a little bit of the, uh, the back of it. Um, anyone got any Views on this. Martin. <laughs> well, I think the whole point is that no one will have a view on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and these days with the uh, the vulcanized and rubberized uh, flat roof, you know, they mm -hmm. are there for millennium almost. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot better than, than the old type of flat roof that uh, mm -hmm. that we used to see. So, um, in short, I don't have any objections to this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Just that I, I think most of the houses have similar extensions. This isn't an exception along there. And, um, you know, so I, I, I don't see why we, I would support the application. Yeah, Roger, does... Okay, we support it. support it. We support it. Mm -hmm. Anyone? Else, in that case, I propose that we uh, have no objections. Seconded by Councillor Rock. All those in favour? Everyone except Robin Staley. Thank you very much. And the next one is East and West Buckingham Lodges at the entrance to Stowe Avenue. Be confused with the salt and pepper pots, which are actually on the estate. Um, no comment from Heritage yet. I've checked about four o'clock, uh, but it's all being done without spoiling any um, of the look of the place. It's just raising the roof slightly. It'll still be behind the balustrade, so it won't be seen from anywhere. A grade two listed. Um, anyone have a view on that, Fran? I can't see any reason to object to it mm -hmm. because it's it's in order to um, try and. Um, allow historic buildings to be um, more habitable <laughs> um, for the per, um, present climate. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? In that case, subject to the Heritage Office's comments, I propose that um, we, we don't object. No, mm -hmm. we, 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 seconded by Councillor Rao. 
Um, when, <laughs> where do you do a ticket to make the third council? Well, I, I propose council last second. Yeah, don't jump in there. It's oh, a big You might have to give a first raise your hand when I say all those in favour. Again, they're going to play the part from council start to finish. Thank you. Thank you. Right, the next three are all um, sea fields. That's to the bit below the more more than that. First one's thirty seven bobbins way up on Lace Hill. It's a proposed block up on window insertion of three new windows to rear elevation. Um, this has already been approved because members decided no objection. Um, the second one is. <laughs> So, I just want to congratulate them on their drawings. Yeah. <laughs> the next one is 24 down and close, which is down on the village, just off 30 feet. Um, it's a proposed single story for extension that is going to replace a conservatory. Um, the one thing we have a concern about is that the gap between this new extension and the back wall of the adjoining house is 15 centimeters. That's about the width of my laptop. Yeah. <laughs> and and no, we do have concerns about that when we're having a discussion this afternoon. That is small. Is there anything from the neighbor? About that? They're not, they don't put good site notice from that. <sighs> This worries me because we're getting on lots of leads now and they're not consulted locally. So it could be a mad surprise when the builder turns up with his new stuff to the, the neighbourhood. I oh, wouldn't complain about that if I'd known. I've got a feeling that might be one that goes on to break builders. Into what? Break builders. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah. Martin. Is it that close because the existing conservatory is that close and therefore they are assuming it's like for like? Because otherwise, don't we talk about a metre or something away from an adjoining wall? Well, from the plan as a conservatory. Yeah, the existing ground floor plan, and you can see that conservatory, which is the anchor point. It's not the same distance as they proposed in the extension. Actually, um, the existing uh, conservatory is effectively a lean to, isn't it? So, therefore, um, as I've mentioned before, um, I wonder about the wall is, is uh, that is with the neighbours is subject to, you know, um, uh, oh, to you know, yeah, that's right. Um, but on, on that basis, if you're if you're wanting to put in how it's drawn with the proposal, um, then surely the, the designer could have really just um, made a very neat little extension to that wall and and continue with the party wall approach. And if I was the chap or lady next door, um, then I would argue that as um, I should have a party wall agreement. <laughs> That a little slitty bit there where all the leaves and the wet and everything could get in would, would actually damage effectively my side of the party wall because it's always the you know the party walls on, on the opposite, as it were. And and I would have thought, surely the designer could have made a better job of that, really. So have we got grounds, Catherine, to defer a decision until there uh, is. So we have more information on whether the neighbour has been consulted over the possibility of getting a party wall. No, I've got no indication at all that there's any any consultation has taken place. Yeah, in fact, they don't face notices either. So no, 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 yeah, yeah, different colored things, you know, it's... So actually, following that, I propose that we do what we suggest and yeah. defer it to which of the major yes, and I'll second whether, whether the neighbor yeah. or not would be agreeable to a party wall. So that's you second that, yeah. Man. I was just going to say, in Catherine's um spiel on it, it does say that um 
the present conservatory is up against the rear wall of number 28. That's it. Yeah. Lisa. Thank you. But how are we going to find out about the neighbour? Are we going to contact a neighbour ourselves? Because if we have no site notices on. But there's going to be no site notices, so how do we know they know? If we exactly so. Don't that's, what, that's what we're saying. That's what we're, that's what we're, we're asking for deferment until the neighbour is consulted. But how will we know? They can stop the neighbour. Yeah. Clearly, they've got the address. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that we still won't know if the neighbour's been told because it's. The point of saying the neighbour is they're supposed to send us not. And if we say, can we say that the neighbours have been consumed and okay. and, and are, are not bothered? Okay. All right, so we have to. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. They're laying themselves open to all sorts of. Yeah. yeah. Just, letters and things. I think the difficulty with these notifications is that all oh, this is a replacement type of application if you want, mm -hmm. uh, for a, a letter which used to say, Do I need planning permission for this? So it's not actually a planning application. So mm -hmm. the, the local authority don't have to put a notice up, they don't have to notify anybody. Because if you if you're saying do I need planning permission for this, it's come through on the standard application form. Sorry? It does come through on the standard application That's form. right, yeah. But the, the <laughs> used to do this by letter, but then they that the government changed the rule years ago that you got to now submit this official request and pay a fee. So but basically all you're asking is is it lawful to me to build this without planning permission? So the building regulations not prevent this? I don't know. They'll, they'll need to submit a building notice or a building rate application, but again, they're not like a planning application. So you, not, none of us here would know if the building rate application has been put in because they're, they're not um, accessible to the public. So it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a the way they operate this scheme. It's, it's nationwide. It's not just happening. People put these things in, and then everybody, like parishes and town councils, get to consult. But there's, there's no point because you can't. They they can only reply to the applicant. Yes, you have permission. No, you don't. So it, it's. It's just a legal nicety, yeah. rather than a letter saying. On the other hand, sure. I do have evidence that they take notice for instance. They probably do, but they, you know, they can. But then, then they end up and then it goes to your dealers. So we'll see that yeah. <laughs> This is why we're consultants. We have local knowledge. Of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, it is a. It's not a very good system. Yeah, thank you, Roger. There's a lot of issues, Martin. Uh, carrying on that vein, um, I think there could be insurance issues with next door. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that it was a, I don't know what you call it, a stub wall, a, a low wall um, on the existing conservatory, and now we're going for a much higher one. Mm -hmm. um, as has been said, that will create more of a dampish area around there. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think that is a good situation for either uh, tenants, owners, whatever they are, of uh, the said house and the one that it um, is close to now or in the future. Thank you. So we've got a proposal that we defer the decision until we've got more information about the possibility of a party wall. Yeah. Um, all those in favor? That's everyone except Robin Spain. Thank you very much. Chapman will obviously know how to work with us. Okay, and the final building application or um, certificate of law is 22 Mulgrew Court, which is up on page here. It's adding a fitted bedroom as a ground floor extension. Yeah, single story for extension. Um, it already has three parking spaces to include the garage. Um, Anyone, any views on that? No, in that case, I propose that we approve it. Thank you. Anthony seconded. All those in favour? Okay, everyone. Thank you.
There's two tree applications, one of which has already been dealt with in some the strawberry tree in 55 World Street, removal for the access to the highway from the rear garden. This is one that we drew attention to the fact that it uh, had not, we weren't clear that the applicant had the right to go onto the land. He's, he's still got a planning application outstanding, and the condition that the tree officer put on it was consent must be sought from the tree owner prior to the implementation of works. So he listened to us and yeah. as he's taken that on board. But that's already been approved. So. I don't know how much interest you're going to get out of that. Yeah. Um, and the other one, which was... Um, yeah. uh, sorry, uh, Martin. Um, surely, well, it is, also, it is the um, approval of the owner of the tree, but also, even if the tree gets, um, or the owner of the tree approves, surely it's still the situation of, moving out of his or their area uh, ownership across onto the highway. It's just not the tree, is it? The tree, doesn't matter if no, the tree's there no. or not. But if he wants access from his rear garden into Brooks Court from then Well Street. Yeah, well, even worse. <laughs> <laughs> but that's in his planning application. There is a gate on that side in his planning application, but that hasn't been decided yet. So right. that house on Well Street is, is listed to places. So we could find that he removes the tree and then can't get planning. Yeah, yeah that's mm. the well, access to the property. He just went straight to his garage now with that. And that's, well, yeah. That's what this guy did. But that's why we're here today. Yeah, we could make that point already. Yeah. So, thank you. Uh, and the other big application, uh, number 10, 21 Wagons Garden. Um, there was some um, objections, no objections to one and two, but there were objections to pollarding the yew tree, which is seven foot above ground level, but they've some. It's got a very fine twisted trunk. I mean, it's really interesting to look at. Yeah. <laughs> so we have made those by email, haven't we? Those. Yes. That, that's in hand, it hasn't actually been approved as far as they know yet. Well, that, the, the second one hasn't, no, no, that's... But, but they are protected trees, whereas the other one is in the conservation area. So we've made, we've made our point on that one. We just say we told you so. But see, oh, it's this <laughs> ongoing saga of Wagner's garden. <laughs> <laughs> we told you so. <laughs> Thank you. Um, moving on then, um, item 6 to planning inspector. We've got two planning appeals. Um, which is coming up, one against uh, <coughs> extending the vehicle access across the public footpath at 33 Willow Drive. If you recall, the um, applicant claimed that he had the owner property, but he wants to extend his driveway over and he doesn't. Um, it was refused by Buckinghamshire Council, mm -hmm. uh, but he's not taking that line down. Um, despite the fact they said it failed to recall with the GPDO. Would need planning permission. He decided to appeal against the refusal of um, the application. I think the big worry here is that what we've said already is good for the planning for the planning field, but I feel we should add to that that if this was allowed, it would create a precedent for getting the land grabbing to do what they want in, in that, that basis. So I would, I for one, would be firmly. Uh, Mm -hmm. Somebody asked that we add that to our reasons. Yeah. Against it. Anyone else have a view on that? Well, 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 well I was going to say, presumably, if he doesn't own the land, he can't build it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just a. He wants to get that block blockading across the pavement. Yeah. And then we've got a number of things there. There is a, there is a raised curve um, with a drain right in front of it. Ooh. So you couldn't make a drop curve out of that. No, but it just it just seems that if the if the highway authority won't let me do it because they own it, then it just seems a bit of a waste of time in appealing. Because in appealing, it's like well, I'm sure somebody said that to him. <laughs> I mean, this is this is a, a guy who didn't even produce you know, the the standard plan mm. you can get from the 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 the, the, the reading one. Yeah. He didn't even do one of those. He used a open reach asset map. <laughs> <laughs> She's Margaret. 
Yeah, he says the location of works is a dead end with no through traffic and only accessible by the handful of residents. That to me is completely irrelevant. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it doesn't matter where it is. He doesn't own it. Mm -hmm. He's trying to take something that's not his mm -hmm. and it should be available to the, any pedestrians who want to walk along there. Mm -hmm. It's not a private road. It's irrelevant that it's a dead end and nobody else wants to walk along there. Maybe I'll go and walk along there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take it too wide. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> so this has been dealt with by written representation. So if we just close on November the night, if we just again confirm our reasons, having our concern about creating a precedent. Absolutely. Thank you. So we need to take a vote on that. Okay, I'll sorry, Chairman. That. Sorry, Chairman, quickly. Second. Sorry. Um, we're, we're also says to fit part the clear of any services. If there's a drain, that's a service, surely. Yeah. This is, a, this is the point we made. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Second, Anthony, thank you very much. All those in favour? Thank you, everybody. Set so, Robin again. And the other plan of bill is um, cost chopper in Nelson Street. They didn't give permission to. Keep the uh, the lower advertising boarding. It's all done and done in one go. Yeah, I'll, I'll make it the lower ones. Mm. Lisa. Thank you. Um, the last sentence, um, so page four of 49, the appellant is amenable to removal, removal of the hoarding below the windows. Um, why doesn't he just do it then? If he's amenable to it, just just remove the hoarding. That's that's well, the one that we're objecting it's to. Cost, it's actually painted onto the structure, and it's going to be quite costly. That's not our problem. It's a listed building. He, he says it, here that he's inspector, amenable to doing it. So if you are, then do it. If the inspector says you don't need to, then he doesn't have to spend the money. Well, then he's not amenable to doing it, is he? Why well, put it in there? Do it if you're made to do it. But that doesn't. No, I'm sorry. It's if if you're happy to do something, but and you know that the town council is objecting because it's the conservation area, then in good faith, you go ahead you still and do it. The replacement fascia and projecting sign rejected as well. So he needs that refusal overturning. And that's and, that's, then, and then he can remove the other ones. But as it stands, he's going to have to remove his facial board and his projecting sign as well. Yeah, there are replacements of the, the existing ones from the what were they called before? Longus. And I get that, and that's fine. But it's the, his sentence saying that he it was yes, happy to do it. But that's he's, my argument. He's is if you're happy to do it and you know that we are objecting to that specifically, then in good faith, why not do it? Well, our objections are there in, in, in writing yeah. that we made. So, is anyone wanted to add anything to that, or we're happy to let that go forward as our written representation? Yeah. I'll compose that then. Anthony, so <laughs> <laughs> thank you for everything. All those in favour? Everyone in favour. Thank you. Good. That ends planning application. Planning decisions, you'll see under item seven. Um, we oppose ninth number lane, but we've lost that one. Um, the planning officer decided there was sufficient uh, space there for some self contained flats with all, all their services. Mm -hmm. And the dental practice at 50 to 51 Nelson Street, which we're opposing, has been withdrawn. So, for the time being, again, that's a listed building. And they wanted to change part of it to an agent. Right, that's mm -hmm. including the dentist. Okay. And go. Dentist. Fine. Um, other, right, moving on then to item eight, um, Buckinghamshire Council matters. We see new the Buckinghamshire Council, new documents, information from Buckinghamshire Council members present. Robin, I just um, have several things to mention. It. Um, firstly, I, I, if you want to look at Appendix B, mm -hmm. uh, which was our, your concerns about the GPR responses mm -hmm. and how they took it down off the website mm -hmm. um, and I put that question mm -hmm. in to try and get some clarity <laughs> I don't think I've managed that I think I've managed to get a written response which doesn't really offer much more clarity apart from legacy parties and 
whatever. So I'm not too sure where we go with that. Mm. But it doesn't actually get us any further for why these documents disappear uh, and what is the... I mean, I'd be interested in people's comments on that latterly, whether we think that explanation is good enough for what we need to know. It doesn't sort of suggest why they disappear when you're trying to look back to appeals. Mm. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll stop if you want me to then let you talk about that. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Rob. So um, on that, um, so let me get, it might say page 31 of 49, and it's the last um, sentence. Um, so the first thing is where it says uh, four or five lines up that the single Buckinghamshire Council wide system has been approved. When will that start then? Because saying that it's been approved is brilliant, but again, just word salad. If we've asked specifically about that, you know, let us know a date at least. Um, and then if members are aware of that little bit there, um, that we have reported instances plenty of times um, of uh, feedback and comments that were removed. Um, do we know if they were given over to the um, appeal at the time um, to the adjudicator? Were they given over or not? Because again, it doesn't say, it just says, let them know if we know of an instance. Well, we have previously, but it doesn't really give us any information again. Well, this is the problem with the politics. It's a political answer to a business type question, I suggest. I mean, I'm happy to discuss how we go back and get some more clarity around the points which are missing. I think I can do that in uh, correspondence first. And then if we get no joint, we'll probably go for a question. Um, mm. And because the constitution is so grand, I have to be very careful when I place questions. Now I use my time efficiently, but I think yeah. if members want to discuss what they think is lacking, with the chairman and mm. everyone, and then come back, I'll go back and see some clarity around the point which you're missing. Thank you. That, because I mean, I could do that. But, no, I appreciate that. Roger? I was just going to, I, I haven't read that very well, but just a quick question. Because you have in the date of a refusal, so to an appeal, you've got six months. Yeah. So could could we not ask them to leave them on for six months? That's what we did until the appeal period yeah. ceases. But they answered that. And they say no, it goes straight away. Which seems to me that's dark because mm. if you not you were just saying yeah. If you wish to refer to your comments mm. or other people's comments, we can on some applications, there's thousands. Yeah. And so that to me puts those writing comments um, not supporting an appeal or at a disadvantage. Yes. Yeah, just to be clear on the clarity, the, the reply from Peter Strachan said a small number of applications will end up appealed. So the guidance stated at this point is the representations should be republished. So they don't disappear completely, they keep it somewhere safe and then put them back on the website. Has that been tested? It doesn't, no, we don't know. Yeah. Well, if I could just expand on what you're saying, um, it's not the only need of course appeals. You've got judicial reviews, yeah. you've got new or amended plans after once being approved or refused, generally amended plans. So, I, I was not, yeah. I was going to go that way. I thought that I could give everyone the respect to hearing the view of everyone before mm. I go for it. Do you want to start from that? Yeah. Like I was, I was just going to say, I'm like, it's if, um, if the, it's the history of a, a mm. um, property as well, isn't it? And like in, in previous times, um, if you looked at a property on MDC's planning portal, um, you could see all the comments and mm -hmm. um, um, documents associated with that um, um, that property for every single planning application that there's ever been on it. Um, so I think I think we're we're losing um, a huge amount of um, information, which is really valuable for making future decisions. Um, yeah, uh, can, can I suggest for you and Chairman what what I would suggest if we write into um, Catherine, um, what your concerns are, and I'll come in and sit down 
and then work through them, make sure that I do a collegiate response to take everybody's thoughts. I've got my own concerns, but I wanted to take the committee's concerns. If that's helpful. Um, yeah, the yeah, other agenda yeah, on the other side, you'll see, did you know that we were quite concerned about um, sewage and, it, mm. and, it, and they, they're very unclear. Again, they're very unclear about who's going to do what yeah. and whether they're going to pursue it. Um, they seem to pass it over to the Environment Agency, although they agreed in a motion that they would be very right, strong words. But the danger is with the sewage um, regulations as they are, and you, you can just, the water coverage has been pretty pumped to 2035. Um, none of the legislation which is current is going to come into place until 2050. Which means the sewage companies can basically wait till it rains and 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 they can act allegedly, lawfully, or whatever, which doesn't help us because we know as a community there's at least um two cases which will be going through the courts to do with Buckingham, which at the time is appropriate, I will give you the details, um, but not now. Um, so I think that um this is worrying. It's, mm. It appears that there is no rigour um, on our rivers, and, and, and we we were all out there doing our little bit, which isn't in the river. I'm, it was clean that day, but this pump and surge in the river seems to be mm. quite a problem across Buckinghamshire. And it, it it seems that they um, they are doing something on they're doing a policy uh, um, a review on the chalk streams in the environment and select committee which is has written a report so they're going to go and look at the chalk stream and pollution and how they manage it but they hadn't taken in considerate views so it's the chest they're looking at but they haven't taken in considerate views all the Thames which I've got to look at to see how I can get that back to the table because it seems really silly to do a report on one area which didn't take the others but that's the response we got. Further to that, I went back recently, as I said, I think I said at the council, and questioned them about the archaeology site, which mm -hmm. we've all been really interested in, of the 80 bodies. And yeah. the response on the website is on the on the webcast. If I was to say that I was over, over under impressed with the response, mm -hmm. um, it probably wouldn't go far enough. Um, but it appears that very Little has been able to happen since we raised it. And this goes back to 2019, and it originally got into the papers in 2020. And every paper under the sun wrote their own version of the truth. Um, but um, so we're not likely to get an instant thing. There are, um, perhaps Roger can correct me if I'm wrong, there is the Institute of Architects of, of Archaeology which is the monitoring body which oversees the works of archaeological firms. Um, I did intimate in my verbal question, perhaps they were going to go that way, but they didn't come back verbally saying that, only that they were working very hard and uh, they needed to look at this. And there was a 78, it's on in the public, so they said in the public, it's a 78,000 pound bill to pay for the preparation and preserve of the what they call it post-archaeological remains that means the actual conservation of them and at the moment there's no money with the private um, archaeology firm who haven't been paid although they were quite pleased that they managed to get the people talking to each other again which I think um, over 12 months I think even I could have got two people talking to each other in 12 months mm. in fact I could have talked to them lots of times in 12 months if they wanted me to Endlessly. Um, but no, that's one of two other things. And then there's two things that I think you need to, perhaps we need to start taking aware of. Um, I went to a meeting this morning, this afternoon, to do with um, HS2. And you may say, why am I raising it with you? There's lots of mitigation works going on, balancing ponds and stuff to do with HS2, which contribute to the water course. And they're going to flow into the um, Ray's Brook from, from um, Chetwood. They end up into Ray's Brook. So and the HS2 is putting balancing ponds there. I've asked to make sure that the flows out from those 
balancing ponds and from HS2 railway doesn't increase the flow, which gets into the water course. Because at times of flood and heavy rain, what we could get a situation, which I suggested today, was the water could go into those, off the railway into those balancing ponds, straight down the river through Stephen Clayton, and then straight down through Stephen Clayton through Formula, um, and then straight through Formula into the, um, uh, the um, then if it floods in the weir down Fortin, above the weir, then you back back up into Buckingham, and Buckingham could be affected by that flow of water and flooding. Mm -hmm. And it could increase the total amount of flow. I think it's something that we do need to be minded to have a look at these works when they are adjacent to the watercourse. Um, so I raised that thinking that, um, of course, 2020 wasn't a great year for us, or was it? But it's um, only two years on from that. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we won't see it again, but I'm sure we'll get challenged. The other element was there's a couple of things I, I haven't commented on, one because I'm on the fire authority. And that is the, um, there's an application for another, um, or will be an application for another um, beacon on the tower, you know, telecommunications, which is coming forward. So I wrote back to them that I wouldn't comment on it because I'm on the fire authority. Um, but also something which I spoke to the chairman about, you need to know that there's an application from, um, all that application interest being expressed by Tyrrell to come to me. I'm not going to comment on the application per se, only to say that there are some known policies in the local plan and the Vale plan, which we perhaps yourselves should look to talk about, because this is another 300 houses um, being looked to be built the opposite side of the uh, YPAP um, site, which I believe took by the chairman, that's an in was an industrial area site within our local plan. I think it was for, for memory, be something or other, U220, something like that. But I do think that it's something that you need to be minded to, and I don't know how you deal with it as a town council. Of course, I have always the opportunity that it might not go to strategic development trial and might end up coming to another committee. So I won't say anything about it, just in case the remote possibility I get to sit on a planning application about my own community. You know, they just, just, you know, it'd be quite nice to once in two and a half, three years to sort of have a planning application you know, that I could sit on, you know, after not declaring any prejudicial interest on so many applications. It'd be nice if one of them come up once, wouldn't it? But at the moment, they seem to be being decided by the chairs and the planning officers and, and, and whatever. So I, I just made notes on that. And I hope that helped. that's helpful. I think Fran has a question. Um, it's not really a question. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Robin. Um, I um, would like to challenge, really, um, in Appendix B, um, the response from Brookings Council, um, from Gareth Williams, which states um, um, Brookings Council is, of course, appalled at the discharge of raw sewage into our waterways. And though not experienced directly in Buckinghamshire, that has been going on um, at Chesham Sewage Works, discharges by Thames Water on a very regular basis for as long as I can remember. I think they, he was referring to coastal waters yeah. there. Not um, because right, we don't okay. have a coastline. Yeah. It's not clear in the sense no, of the it's not old. Britain, but it, it, it not means... experienced directly in Buckingham. Yeah. Coastal water. Um mm -hmm. yeah. 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 You, you will be aware last week, I mentioned it briefly with council, but the Environment Agency had been using COVID as an excuse mm. not to do these things. Mm. Yeah. The point made that officially that ended in April 2021, the old restrictions. Um, at the same time, the Rivers Trust drew attention to the fact that the Environment Agency was using the COVID excuse not to tackle and deal with sewage going into rivers. Um, of course, the other thing we've got outstanding, what we've just touched on, it's six years now since we had that alleged chemical discharge at Brackley, and we've still not had the results for prosecution. 2018, mm -hmm. that's okay, that's it. Four years, 2018, that's it. 
Um, what, I, what I can say on that is there is a case before that. So the case before that has to get before the court as it's, it's a penultimate. The findings of that case will predict how other matters are dealt with. And that should be before the courts um, in next year. At some point early next year. So that would be the test case. Yeah, I think my understanding is under advisement or to myself, is that um that, that will be quite a major case. Um it went from a two-day case to three-day case, and that's a five-day case. So I am monitoring it and I'm not giving any sight of where it is because the last thing I want after um two three years, four years, five years, sitting with it, is somebody else to rock up in 20 seconds and just stand there in a photograph and say they solved it again. So um, um, so I'm definitely giving no information out about it, only to people I would work with. Um, Thank you, Lloyd. Um, well, we'd also like you raising the subject of 300 houses up next to Wysat. The town clerk is aware of this. Um, we are going to write to the, the potential developer because they have asked to meet councillors individually, which is not our policy, but they will be invited to a meeting of the council. I was going to go not the next interim because that's quite a busy one. Yeah. One after that for council. Um, so the, we will make a point to um, the developers, Grainio Developments, that site Q is in the Buckingham neighbourhood plan and was reinforced in the new valve at site B, you see. 020. So it, it's got double protection, mm -hmm. not only from our neighborhood plan, but also from that project. It's also got protection from the letter you received from the planners. Thank you. If it's not, then it's not, isn't it? Yeah. I, I've, I haven't took a correspondent today on it, but um, only to ask some yeah, questions. So I'm not expecting an answer to after the 23rd looking at the read receipt. Um, so I might get an answer the week after that. If, it, if it's useful, I'll bring it back. If it's not, I'll keep it to myself. But um, but I am still in due diligence. I'm just not minded to get into any discussion with no. the developer for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. but thank you for mentioning it. So that, that is in hand. The town clerk will be writing to the local, inviting him if they still just lastly, I, I am going to be talking about enforcement later in the week. So if you've got any strong views on enforcement that I haven't got myself, um, um, I'm always willing to hear good things to say. I'm about to be meeting them about enforcement. <coughs> any other questions for Robin? No, Robin, thank you for your comments at the point. Well, almost, yeah. <laughs> um, just seen that we've been quite busy the past yes. three or four months. Thank you very much. Um, so, yeah, we've, had, we've done both the item eight. Um, Catherine in appendix C has updated this the undecided oppose and call in, uh, attend call in application to track for information. Um, I think my update can represent your outside audience. Anybody here? Who yeah. Thank you. They're all still in boxes, Chairman, <laughs> down in the archaeology the outside audience. I can turn back into the council committee meetings, um, North Bucks area planning committee in September <laughs> and October were both cancelled, which is why Robin is getting so frustrated. And 10 to um, strategic sites committee, the September one was cancelled. The October one was also cancelled. Right, thank you for that. <laughs> is it democracy at work? Yep. Could, could I, through you, Chairman, say that can we have on um, start monitoring? Because I do think that through our lack of consultation at the town council level, I do think we need to start monitoring two select committees' agendas, one being the Growth and Infrastructure Select Committee, which is your only chance to, if something comes up to do with local development plans and you wish to have it, you're perfectly entitled to go and ask a public question. Chairman, I appeared at it the other day. It, it, they breached the constitution, but they were reminded about that afterwards. Um, but we, we do need to, you know, it needs people going to these committees and raise it. The other one is the environment and transport 
select committee because I do think we need to monitor those genders because if something come up in the Environment and Transport Committee in relation to roadworks or major development roadworks to Buckingham, I think that we knew as a committee, the right committee to go and speak about that. And the trouble with the constitution, Buckinghamshire Council, it was wrote in such a way that it's hard. Um, that you've got to, you've got to, as a member of the public, pick an item which is on the agenda. So the board is stacked against us uh, at the town level to actually be able to hold them to account about your issues. And when it goes past that, um, Unless we call it in that we're calling something in this week. This is always good fun to call something in. Um, and we're calling something in this week, but that's not in local. But I do think we need to start monitoring this stuff. As the development of the Buckinghamshire plan starts to um, evolve, this will be going, because it has to go to the Growth and Infrastructure Committee, because that's the committee they chose to put it through scrutiny. And any member of the public, any member of the council has got the right to go and ask a question. And if we're not going to talk to a, a peers, they're not going to talk to us as a town council very readily to 2023. Um, it's a standing issue quarterly or whatever on there. And I, I do think that we've got to start using those things because I can go and speak endlessly, but I'm not the town council. And um, and I think that you need to start having our own your own voice in these things as well. I might rock up, but I'm but but that's um. I'm not the town council and I shouldn't presume to speak for them on on you know I do think it's something we need to monitor. Thank you, Ron. <laughs> yeah, under these uh, uh items uh, pen on our agenda, do they say why they're cancelled? Is it because they don't have any items put on their agenda, or are they deferring the work to a in inverted commas responsible delegated, delegated um officer? Yeah. Officer and chairman of the so now we have a way that only one person is looking at particular items on their agenda. One elected person. Well, okay, elected or <laughs> one elected member of office. And they together make the decision of that committee, which has been cancelled. Yeah. They make a decision about whether it goes to committee. If they decide it doesn't go to community, it goes to the case officer to make a case for what her recommendation is, her recommendation, a decision. And then it's just basically if the, the report looks good to the team leader, then sign the stop. But surely there are other items on their agenda which are not. Case. You'd think that minutes of the last meeting would occur and things like that. It's obviously they're not having any minutes of the last meeting because that would have been cancelled. So I, there won't I, be any of those. I, I did actually have a look today at the six months since May because that's the municipal year. We've had six months. There's seven meetings for each of those two committees. Four of them have been cancelled for North Bucks and three of them have been cancelled for strategic. Wow. Well. But if we don't uh, well, it, it, strategic is county wide, so I mean it can be a work. That's so, what I'm thinking. I mean, there must be some work to be done on this. Most of them, when yeah. they do occur, are a single application agenda. Really? Yeah. Yeah. This is what we're raving against. Mm -hmm. well, the meetings we we have had some meetings, none of them are here. Um, some of them have been repeat meetings because we didn't get the third two of them have been repeat meetings because we didn't carry the process now correctly in the previous meeting. On both occasions, we met twice because we didn't carry the process now properly. Allegedly, I don't think they both were wrong, but that's how it went. What I am doing now is I'm, I'm immediately because I'm concerned about people being able to speak about this stuff, I'm immediately saying that I'm keen that this should go to committee and um, meeting the poor officers get to meet me, all, all things, <laughs> and they get to meet me and um, I'm due to meet them on several developments which have come here, but I don't get involved in or do not waste officers' time with single developments about a house or something like that. I only say and talk to them about the larger ones and like 
you you've discussed things like industrial estate to the road and things like that the things that are a way to I, I i i do talk to them about those because they're in my area if i didn't they not anyone would and um and asked one of our members in the that end of the ward is the chair of the planning committee and on strategic development um i'm presuming he's talking as well to them but um my view is that if i can find ways that to be discussed in public i will do um and have done and, and as for the recent Nate morton when i was in denmark um, which is one holiday I've had in God knows how many years, um, like that. And um, I took my laptop with me, luckily, and I was emailed um, to ask um, whether I still wanted to call the application in. So, as it wasn't going to go to the committee. Fortunately, I wrote back to them and sent them the correspondence where I had to call it in 2020 and I hadn't changed my mind one job. But I had to come up with some other reasons, which I did. And then two days later, they found out I was outside the country and the computer locked me out, but at least <laughs> <laughs> it locked me out because I was using the server that didn't recognize. Thank you for that, Robin. That comes to the plan. So you mentioned Nines Moor, but does that this actually come to the judiciary review for the nine? It has. Yes, it's set down for December two, oh. a day and a half in December. Oh, no. Up in the seventeen. In the federal courts of justice, not that one. This was made more than road three. This is, this is oh, right. Right. I am got involved in that. No, and that is just that. Uh, yeah, Pat Hard Carson mm. has, has raised his forty thousand pounds. Bring it. She needs to bring it as an individual. It, it, it made more than done it as a council. It, it got a lot more. Mm. Um, it, it could be allowed for a lot more fitness against them. So. Okay, thank you. Um, if we can move on then to item 11 consultations. There's two here that Catherine has kindly put together for us. Thank you very much, Catherine. The affordable housing one is very, very encouraging for us because it's included everything we've been banging on about the 35% neighborhood plan policies. And they, the, this document does acknowledge that that does not explicitly state it supersedes any neighborhood plan policy. So that it's a side by side. So there we finally got it in black and white from, from the LPA, um, um, which is very, very good news indeed. What's not such good news is that the same day that I saw this, um, the papers reported that the new Secretary of State for dumbing down, <laughs> Simon Clark, is going to put it from less affordable housing instead of um, triggered by 10 as currently it would be triggered by developments of 40 to 50 houses wow. uh, to encourage more building to meet government targets um, that's the same time that um, the prime minister said she was going to drop 300,000 new homes per year target if she was elected prime minister um, the other thing he also said he wants to do away with the need for planning permission <laughs> on any household extensions so that's just what he's saying. Yeah, thank you for that. Captain, thank you for that. Meeting. It's really helpful in all the yeah. housing. Uh, Martin, you first up. Yeah, even though um, the documents stand um, side by side, as you know, even standing side by side, uh, there are some that look up and some that look down. So we haven't lost the 35% housing, the affordable housing. We, we won every round with that. Robin? I'm always pleased to have been right, even though I knew I was right in the first place. Because <laughs> um, um, when they took the bail plan through the district council, the only person for any amendments to it was myself. One of them, and, and one was one of them was to the affordable 35%. Mm. They struggled hard and came up with many um, um, discussions what I've been voted against the 35%. I think that's a public record, mm. so you can go back and see who voted for what. Yeah. Um, and um, and then we've discussed it endlessly since then. And now, with paperwork, um, I take it as a personal compliment that they think that because I was back in the town council's view in that meeting, not my own, yeah. but we all wanted thirty-five percent. So I take it as a personal compliment, a compliment to the town council that that these people um, are now in agreement with us. It would have just seem to be a long, hard road to get them to agree with what we said, which was correct in the first place that we needed affordable housing. As for what the government says they're going to do, 
I think that's that verdict still out there, isn't it? Um, 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 and may change, which government <laughs> may change by the hour. Um, but, but I do think, to be fair to the many of the officers down there, they'd just like to steer to know where they've got to go. Yeah. Because, quite frankly, and Roger probably knows this more than any of us, not knowing what the government is going to do, how do you move forward if they keep changing their mind every five minutes? And, and each person announces their own personal wish list. Yeah. Um, as we've seen how that affects the economy. But, um, but no, I, I think we should have a press release on that. I think, through you, Chairman, I think we should, that it's encouraging that, that, the, that, the, that the 35% is... Well, it's, we've never, it's, nothing's changed, they're just acknowledging what we've Well, I think, it's worth, I think it's worth acknowledging the press release around it. I think it, it's a big win for us. Um, uh, who, uh, well, not just us, of course, it's Winslow as well. I know, but we don't live yeah. in Winslow, Chairman. We no, 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 no. no. Um, <laughs> I don't live in Winslow, I don't represent Winslow. No, no, I, no, I, no. I think our neighbourhood plan, and what we wanted, and what Buckham Society and us wanted when we drafted that, and what we said all along about affordable housing and 35% of affordable has come around that they are in agreement with us, and we should thank them for being in agreement with us, and we should do a press release. I propose that we do do that. and. Um, I think the public will know, without no doubt, who were the individuals who first struggled against this, and that was Buckingham Town Council. So I propose we do a press release. You make that proposal. Yeah. Thank you. Second, for press release on this. We yep. second. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else get any comments? Right, but it's the letter then that we do a press release on Buckingham Town Council meeting where we 35 percent affordable housing. Well, Robin said, we told you so. Always in favour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, anyone against? One against? Any abstentions? One abstention. Thank you very much, Robin. Um, right, the other one, the supplementary planning document, again, this is a very important document. Um, we are hugely indebted to Roger Hill from the Buckingham Society. Yep. Thank you, Roger. Roger, would you like to just comment on this um, design SPV? Yes. Um, for those of you, I suspect it's everybody in this room is familiar with this single of the individual design guides that Ian Douglas produced about 20 years ago. They've all been amalgamated into this current document. So in that respect, the, the principles of the design proposed haven't changed. There is um, what they have included in this new is that they've included a considerable amount of environmental issues water, landscape, planting. So as a as a guide, it's, it's it covers everything from say you start off with a field and how you then design up what you're going to put in the field. So I thought I think it's really good. Honestly. And I'm pleased that they used all the old stuff as yeah. well. But which I thought has always been really helpful to officers. Mm. Um, but they brought it up into the 2020s as far as environment uh, issues go. So I would say have a read of it, but it's quite long. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it, it's probably worth reading the landscape and environmental issues bits because they are new. Mm. But, um, the design stuff about extension of new houses, materials, is is rolled over. Um, but the new stuff, I think, is certainly worth reading because it, I think, it's pretty comprehensive and very helpful to us as a town mm -hmm. in going into our revised neighbourhood plan. Yeah. So it, the stuff that we've been talking about. In our working parties, I think this this week's worthwhile. Mm -hmm. What we've been doing, I think. Thank you, everyone. I had, yeah. I had to read through it over the weekend. Things that really jump out. Um, the chat, the, the stuff on character, the elements may be drawn from the um, immediate surroundings. Within LBL, taking care to focus on traditional elements 
rather than inappropriate modern development. That's something they can put on roads. They said applicants should avoid promoting developments accessed only by a single from a single location. Again, you know, and the so supposed way phase one is only one entrance in and out. Larger developments of over 300 houses should consider routing buses through their sites. Mm -hmm. That was a good thing. Yeah. Um, and larger developments should also incorporate a range of local services and facilities. Yeah. And finally, a double port wire because we had an application tonight. Single story extensions should have pitched roofs. Mm -hmm. That's um, just <laughs> Catherine, thank you very much for drawing that together as well. Let me see if you'd like, like to see this made as a proper document that everyone has access to. Yes, a proper document with an index that goes on your shelf. <laughs> yeah. And the I mean, there's a lot of it to wait for. It really is. Um, I mean, because it's a continuous document, you can't actually tell how many pages it is because there's no little number in the corner. But um, I bought it down it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the sort of thing that developers and, you know, their design people, they need to have just something they can quickly click through and say, oh, that's what they say about that. Yeah. Because there are tick box pages, if you like, for developers to actually sort of, yes, we've done that, we've done that, we've done goals. Better go and do that. <laughs> um, which is fine for a developer, but for an original designer, mm. you know, they're just sort of wanting to sketch things out and just get an idea of what they want to do in the state. They could do with a book they can open up and have a look at. Yeah. Uh, I know it takes paper and I know that's bad for the environment, but sometimes it's just not easy to click through a lot of pages that you can't. Mm. You haven't got an, an index or, mm. or indeed a glossary. Yeah. Thank, thank you for the praise of that. May I propose a word of thanks uh, to Definitely. Roger and the Bucking Society for the work that they've done on this. Absolutely. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Robin. Yeah, thank you. Um, premise in my premise, my previous thanks, my previous comments. This actually came up at the Grove and Infrastructure Select Committee the other day. Uh, um, so I talked talk to the Deputy Officer, and she was really very good. And she um, um, and she came back to meet me and came back down after she had had her discussions. In the committee and let me and went through it and very much what Roger said about the way it's going to pick up the elements of the local things that we've done. They're trying to augment that into it. You know, the, the, the fact that this work that you've done is been picked up. They 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 they've used it. Although in, in the report wasn't clear enough. So I, I emailed her during the meeting while she was talking. And um and then she came back to see me. I think it is something that we had a little win over, and um, but I do think that this is why I, I say again we need to start monitoring this selection. If this is going to be our, our development, that it's our chance to speak, <coughs> and the Buckham Society might want to do it as well because they might have something they want to speak about. Yeah, thank you. Right, anyone else? Well, no, good. Thank you very much. Uh, the quarterly meeting for town and parish councils, planning environment service, which um. Catherine kindly turned on behalf. I believe you're still waiting for the final slide. Yes. Again. When you get there, they will be circulated. I'll point out to the team. Can we do that? Who's on the link? Hmm. Hmm. Well, we're very good. Thanks. Thank you very much. Is it because the town clerk is very good at taking it? Has anyone got any comments on that? We can probably note it. And we look forward to getting into the slides. Thank you very much. Um, item 13, enforcement to report any new breaches to the body Um is that issue that I mentioned to you, Catherine, relevant under this heading? Um, well, we were, it's already it's already you reported it to me. You sent me a picture and I can pass the report. Okay. On. Um also Councillor Harvey has noted that the Turkish bar that's in Bridge Street has got a, a sort of very light illumination barber, barber pole thing. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a cylindrical thing with lots of light bulbs, but the, the charge goes round so that it looks as though it's rotating. It's in the conservation area on a list of. It's entirely illuminated. Oh. We discussed that. 
That was the previous. The other this is the Turkish bar. Was a petrol oh, on biscuit. the end where they might have to come. Mm. Yeah, we come. No, that, that is actually a rotating cylinder in the old fashioned style. A set quite... of light bulbs, a bit like a fairground. Uh, okay. Yes, <laughs> yes. That's what caught my eye today. Anyone else have anything there? No, thank you. Just hang it if you sure. haven't got any questions on enforcement, on going to meet on the 19th. So. I have to say that. It's of, of, of the departments at Aylesbury, enforcement is one of the best. Well, yeah, she's working the best. It is really working well, and that is because they've got a full set of people, according to the quarterly meeting. You have already passed on your thanks about it working well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the handling works well. Um, Everything set up for those horses. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to stretch the point of uh, item 13 of enforcement. Um, Enforcement of fiber delivery. Seems <laughs> <laughs> oh, to be on the up again. Um, we'll bring it under point 13 in future meetings if there's anything untoward happening. But um, it's not an enforcement issue, of course. It's a, well, it, it doesn't come under that as report. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can we move on to applications about trees then? The list is we get 16. attached. Noted, everyone? Mm -hmm. yep. Thank yep. you very much. Um, the quarterly update of section 106 agreements, the spreadsheet is attached. Well, no, no, any comments on those? Thank you very much for the work on that. Mm -hmm. Item 16, that is to report. Martin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to stretch the point, if I may, under <laughs> point <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> yes, uh, fiber delivery. I mean, again, it is ripping up the town. Um, and, um, well, just just today, I noticed they started again on page hill. We've got another two months of it on page hill, but, on quarterly yeah. update charts. I thought that company had already, with the purple mode, whatever swish. I thought they'd already been through that section of page, and now they seem to be going well, from the roundabout up again. They didn't warn the page, or they have not come back to finish what they didn't do. Except I, I don't. I had a letter this morning from them saying we'll be doing your street in the next fourteen days. I got one um, last week from yeah. Squish. From they did, they did that in July. Yeah, I had one about two weeks ago. And oh, they've yeah. done mine. Was that, was that before. always sort of the gentleman actually coming to the meeting on the 20th? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I got my letter from Squish that he had been quite rude about. I mean, he sent letters everywhere with yeah. emails mm. and everything. Um, he, that meeting was Friday night. I got mm. it on Monday morning, which I think yeah. is probably the first part of the delivery he could have done it on. And you're right, I saw you know. a blame uh, post office for not delivering mm. hundreds of thousands of letters. That yeah. I yeah. got mine, Catherine, I just checked, I got mine on Tuesday. So the Tuesday afternoon post is when I got my swish letter. I saw the office um, sending out various emails of road closures because they're you know, yeah. digging up mm -hmm. and putting in well, um, whatever they oh, call those yeah. boxes. Yeah. Um, but, well, I've got some yeah. talking, which I've got a note here about the Market Hill closure, um, which is coming up. Exactly, yeah, yeah, that was the one I was thinking of. Yeah, have, is that going to cause huge problems at the market? And no, we've, we've checked exactly where it's going to be in the structure of the market. We went back to the CTR office and contact the public here. Right. Yeah, relationship there. So, so as far as the market goes, it's going to be we are sure it's a good Good. Well, you could say the parking was the other, the other concern. It's only the bit from the hair, the hairdresser down to pretty much citizens' advice. It's that 60 metres uh, It's probably yeah. from the post office to West Street. Okay. Right. Where it's all paid. Oh, right. So it's not, it's not right the way down. It's just that little road, little Tesco. And, and 60 metres. No. Okay. No, stop I, I, I and that, misread the map. Then. That's all uh, tarmac, is it? Not. No. It's what? Gothic. 
So it would all go back as it is. A culty world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they do. No, so we'll be on top of that, will we? Because, you know, once you disturb that sort of... We've been um, three years trying to get the entrance to Feliciana sorted. I've, I've okay. actually got a photograph of their actual promise to do. Um, but I'm, I'm not downing them. I'm, you know, they've got a job to do, but they've also got a job to do to put it back up. The same, if not better, because they have disturbed the uh, the ground. Thank you. Any other damage to purpose, redundant sign? One thing I will point: I've seen a lot of um, adverse publicity on Buckingham Facebook about the parking machines out here. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about this weekend when they were closed to the fair, but prior mm -hmm. to that, only one was working at one point mm -hmm. um, in the whole car park. Oh. Um, it doesn't affect the disabled yeah. people with blue badges, but it doesn't affect older people who yeah. walk all the way across the car park to find mm -hmm. the machines aren't working. They are working against them. It might not use the app. They are working. Could we raise that with them? I think should park in the navigation yeah. by machines. There should be yeah. something. Mm -hmm. I think the final comment I had on it from one person, it's a shame that one of them was working. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah. Those people were having to walk all around the car park looking for the one that worked. And thankfully, people in Buckingham are quite sociable. So they shout, don't go that one. That mm -hmm. one's the only one that's working. But um, people who come to the town will be. It's not good for trade, no. and, it, mm. and, it, and it will deter you coming back. Mm. Most people would strangers to the town. So and, and, um, I was, you know, mm. one of many things you report, and I, am, I was going to report it when I ended up doing something else. Um, but people should report this stuff on everything, should be reported immediately. I think you can even do it on Fix My Streets. It's got a mm. sort of oh, doing it. Yeah, they got I, I think it's got it on there. I think yeah. we should report it because it, I'm not sure quite what it is, but it appears that the blue light's on, but the thing doesn't work. So, and if you remember, the old ones used to never um, used to go wrong when you put the money in periodically. So, whatever wherever they got these parking the ticket machines from, they must have been a bad lot. So the lights are on, but no one's at home. Mm. So yes, that's where I was trying to see where that, 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 Can we propose that they bring the old machines back because they worked? Mm -hmm. uh, no, because you can't, people swap tickets. That's why. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. Yeah. It was to stop you swapping tickets. Mm. You put the 50p in and then take your ticket and blue ticket back to the machine. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Anyway, um, Chairman has no announcements tonight. Uh, the date of the next meeting is Monday, the 7th of November, for an interim. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank, you, Chairman. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you, Thanks, Catherine. Thanks, Laura. 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 Thanks, La